Yoru has been reworked, and wow is he different. Even though a lot of the characteristics have been unchanged, Yoru feels really fresh now. You already have people pretending to be a decoy and honestly they're hitting hilarious clips. So if you want to get into the action and add to the fun to play this reworked anime man into your agent pool, make sure to watch till the end of the video. For now, make sure to like and subscribe, ring that notification bell, and let's get right into it. Firstly, let's quickly go over what's changed and break down all the new abilities. Then we will look at some general Yoru tips, and we'll talk about what type of comps he fits into. And as always, if you want some more in-depth tips and tricks from our Radiant and Immortal coaches, make sure to visit ProGuides.com where you can gain access to all the resources needed to rank up at top speeds. Link is in the description if you're interested. The first ability we're covering is his Fake Out, which is basically a completely new skill from its pre-rework version. It used to be Fake Footsteps, but now it's something completely different, which is a clone. It still costs 100 credits, although his charges drop from a max of 2 to only 1. This ability is definitely a lot more interesting and versatile as well as powerful. Just like the Footsteps, you can place them and leave them to be activated later, or you can simply use them instantly. Upon use, the clone will simply run forward for 10 seconds or until it's shot by an enemy player. When shot, it turns to whoever shot it and flashes in their direction. Now, there's a few things to note about this. Firstly, the clone looks different for teammates than it does for enemies. To teammates, it's very obvious that it's a clone, but for opponents, the model looks identical, and calling clone or no clone is a lot harder. However, there are two pretty clear signs. Firstly, the movement speed. The clone is a bit slower than a regular player. This is something that might not be super obvious now, but it might become more apparent over time as soon as we get used to seeing more Yorus in our game. The second one is that Yoru clone can only run in a straight line, but of course, that also means that you can fake it. Of course, the fact that it runs straight and straight only is pretty obvious. Normal player movement doesn't look like that. However, as I'm sure you've already seen, this obvious sign has a plus side as well. Because it's so obvious that it's not a normal player, you can easily pretend to be a clone. Just hold down W and no other movement keys, and run in an obvious straight line that only a clone would. Then, if your opponents notice that there's no way you're a real player and play Trigger Discipline, you walk into a wall behind them, make them forget about you, and turn on them. This either works very well or not at all depending on your opponents. Funnily enough, this strategy might work even better in higher ranks because people in those ranks are more likely to assume a clone when they see someone walking in a weird way, and they're more familiar with Trigger Discipline. Our tip against this strategy is that at least in most cases you do want to shoot the clone, just to make sure that it really is one. If it pops, you can always turn quickly in order to not get flashed and it's usually not a pretty big risk. Be careful though, if you have teammates nearby and you shoot it, they likely will get blind and they probably won't appreciate it. Also, another cool thing you can do with the clone is supercharge it by having your Sova recon dart it, as the clone is able to carry it. This probably isn't the most effective way to use either ability, but it is super funny and has the potential to work quite well on a sight take. It basically forces your opponents to let the clone be and get pinged or either shoot both of them and get flashed. Having mentioned those two ideas, we think this ability is best used as an entry tool. Have your clone run out of a choke point together with one or more of your teammates, and your opponents will likely be quite overwhelmed by the incoming storm of enemies. And remember, shooting the wrong one can be fatal. Forcing your opponents to play trigger discipline on a clone is annoying, and it slows them down quite a bit when a real Yoru or other player does show up on their screen. The most important thing here, as with most Yoru abilities, is to be unpredictable. Using the same abilities every round in the exact same way is not how you should be playing Yoru. Yoru is all about chaos and surprise, and doing different things every round is how you can make him look good. Using the same clone every round or pretending to be a clone yourself consistently will likely result in a fast loss and an easy bottom frag. With Yoru's kit, and especially with these recent changes, there is a lot of room for creativity, so make sure that you use all the tools in your arsenal to come up with your own creative plays. Before we move on with the next changes and how to use the new abilities though, it's time for our question of the day. Today's question is, what do you think of the new Yoru clone idea? Personally, I think it's something Yoru really needed in order to be more powerful. This clone screams chaos and really makes your opponents think, and at least to me, that was what Yoru was always supposed to be about. But what do you think? How do you feel about the new fake out, and what do you think of the new rework? Make sure to comment your thoughts down below and let us know why. Anyways, let's keep it moving and get back into the video. The second ability we should talk about is the changed gate crash, or teleport ability. From what it was before, it changed quite a bit. It's gotten a lot stronger, but the general idea remains the same. First of all, they got rid of the cooldown idea, as it felt weird and was hard to balance. Now, instead, you have charges. Each round, you start with one charge for free, but you can always buy a second one for an additional 200 credits. Then, like all other duelists, you can recharge the signature ability by getting two kills. So, if you use a TP to get a kill, then you use your second one to get another, your charge will have renewed and your third gate crash will be ready to go. This makes it so that you have a lot more freedom and feel less forced to use bad gate crashes as you no longer have that cooldown constantly on your mind. 
That's probably the biggest change, but they also made it so that you can now fake teleport, which is huge and adds a ton of plays to Yoru's playbook. By pressing F while hovering over the beacon, the fake teleport animation and audio will start. It looks identical at the start, but then the teleport visually fails while it sounds the same as the real deal. The original buff also had people thinking that the teleport delay became shorter from 1.5 seconds to 0.5 seconds. But that was a typo from the devs, so you won't be able to make very aggressive peaks and expect to teleport right in front of your enemies' faces. But they made the teleport beacon travel slightly faster, and they even almost have the range at which you can hear the beacon travel so it's a bit more consistent to use than a pinch. This puts Gate Crash in a spot where it's definitely a lot better. The decreased audio range makes it a lot easier to surprise people with your fake teleport spot. The added charges give you more room to play around with the teleports to make plays, and the fake teleport is great in order to incite chaos like Yoru was intended to do. Just remember, like with the decoy, you want to be very unpredictable when using it. You can absolutely get away with some pretty goofy things as long as you execute them with great confidence. But being predictable will certainly be your downfall, so don't be. Creativity is how you get good with this ability, but to give you some more inspiration, try to teleport deep into sites while your team is rushing in, and use them to rotate faster on the defensive side. Also, remember that your gate crash travels faster than you can, so using them to sprint long distances can sometimes also be viable. For Yoru's flash or blindside, well, it's unchanged, meaning that it's still a pretty good flash that bounces and activates once it hits a surface. It'll cost you 250 credits to buy, and if you flash an opponent successfully, they'll be blind for a full second and a half. Much like before, it isn't the easiest one to use, and it takes some getting used to since the flash bounces. For the flash, we suggest you try to get used to it in a custom game. See how it bounces and then experiment further in game. If you need to flash closer, you can bounce it off the ground next to you, and if you need to go further, you can always toss it deeper. In general, this ability has a lot of room for innovation, which means quick thinking will help you get the max out of this ability more than us telling you different ways the flash bounces. Lastly, his ultimate dimensional drift. His ult was also changed in a major way. Firstly, they made it longer, from 8 to 10 seconds. However, the most important change is that you can now use utility while ulting, whether that's flashes, gate crashes, or even your clone. But on top of that, they also made it so that you can no longer have limited vision and you can see as far as you could possibly want. That means that you can basically use your ult as a beefed up Sova drone that can't tag anybody, but can move super fast and can even use utility. On top of the fact that you can see everywhere, they also made it so that enemies can't see you anywhere, even if you are right up in their face. So even if you're shift walking in front of them, they won't suspect a thing. That being said, however, people can now hear your footsteps from further up to 15 meters. They'll still see it on their HUD if you're super close, and also the exit time is significantly longer, going up from 0.6 seconds to 1.2 seconds. Essentially, the ultimate becomes a lot stronger, you see more around you, and your opponents can't see you. But the trade-off is that you gotta stop trying to shorty people with your ultimate, which honestly, I'm glad to see. Yoru could really use this buff, and that shorty play was kind of cheesy to begin with. Instead of a one kill and TP out ult, now it's more viable for a lot of different plays. You can find out the full setup of your opponents and either find a pocket to exit from or TP out. You can use your flashes to outplay enemies, fake a teleport out, or even flash for your teammates now that they're pretty much aware of the enemy's positions. Overall, these changes are really looking to make Yoru less clunky and more fun, and I think Riot did a pretty good job at it, without making him overpowered that is. He's certainly not Jet, at least not in his current state but he might just be viable and ranked and that's really what matters. So now that we know all the changes and how the new Yoru works, how should he be played? Well, Yoru has always been an agent meant to create chaos and he definitely still is, just with a kit that's more better suited to do so. His decoy might actually be confusing enough to achieve something in certain situations, and his teleport is now probably just strong enough to no longer be useless in higher ranks. In a team scenario, Yoru is best used to be a space-making duelist, creating space through chaos. If a Yoru is going in solo, he's easy to deal with and generally predictable. But if he has follow-up from his teammates, he's certainly annoying and can really show off his strengths. If you send in a teleport into the back of sight, your opponents will want to look at it to kill you as soon as you TP. But if your teammates are running into sight together with your clone, well, they can't afford to look at it. And Yoru can actually get kills through his abilities. Because of that, our biggest tip for his playstyle is to not force weird plays if your opponents are clearly onto it. Flashing your beacon and then TPing certainly feels satisfying if it works but most of the time it doesn't. And if your opponents are too good to fall for that trick, don't force it. Instead, use your decoy and your TP beacon to walk onto the bomb site together with your teammates. And once your opponents are too distracted to care, then you teleport and strike from behind. For team comps, Yoru can be best used if you already have an agent that can wield the operator, and you can use an extra duelist. If you have a chamber, for example, you don't really need to have a jet as well, as in the alping department, you're already set. Or if, for example, you already have a jet, no secondary duelist and all other important roles like controller and initiator are filled. 
having that extra bit of space and firepower definitely won't hurt. Of course, the meta will be ever-changing, but at least right now, you simply need at least one controller, a strong initiator like Sova, and an op character like Jet Chamber or both. In conclusion, Yoru is a pretty good agent, and he's probably certainly playable and ranked. He's a lot of fun to play, and being a creative Yoru specialist is how you get the most success. So if this guide was helpful and you want to be up to date with the latest Valorant tips, tricks, and news, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.